You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. Starting off with the coronavirus, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health, Walid al Mana, today confirmed that work is underway with all relevant authorities to implement the evacuation plan for Bahraini citizens in Iran. al Mana said that all measures are being taken to ensure that they arrive in the Kingdom of Bahrain safely and in accordance with Bahrain's precautionary measures in light of the outbreak of the coronavirus COVID-19 in Iranian cities and the escalation of its spread around the world. He added that work is continuing to transfer the citizens in Iran in stages. The first group of citizens will be evacuated next Tuesday and efforts are continuing to complete the various precautionary and preventative measures to preserve their safety and the safety of the citizens and residents of the Kingdom of Bahrain. El Mana noted that since the announcement of the evacuation plan, relevant authorities have been in ongoing contact with citizens present in Iran that registered with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and their families. El Mana stressed that all those involved in their return are working regularly to complete the process of evacuating them successfully and safely. He added that all returnees from Iran within the evacuation plan will undergo the necessary medical examinations under the supervision of a specialized medical team according to the recommendations of the World Health Organization upon their arrival in Bahrain and they will be transferred to quarantine or isolation and treatment centers if necessary. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health today announced that 12 individuals have been discharged after completing a preventative mandatory 14-day quarantine period, bringing the total number of individuals discharged from quarantine to 38. The ministry outlined that the individuals, all Chinese nationals, one female and 11 males, the ministry affirmed that all cases in the precautionary quarantine centers are continuously monitored under the supervision of a specialized medical team and provide the necessary care for them to ensure their safety in order to preserve their health and the health of all. The Ministry of Health reiterates the importance of of all individuals returning from Iran and other COVID-19 affected countries to schedule their mandatory medical examination by visiting moh.gov.bh forward slash 444 or calling 444. The Ministry of Health affirmed that it continues to take precautionary measures to combat the spread of coronavirus COVID-19. The ministry called on the Bahraini society to follow the instructions they have been provided to ensure their safety and to avoid spreading the virus. The ministry affirmed that it had dedicated its health professionals in coordination with other parties and entities in the kingdom to combat the virus. The ministry also affirmed the importance of closely following instructions such as regularly washing one's hands with soap and water and using a hand sanitizer on a regular basis along with avoiding avoiding shaking hands and greetings with hugs and kisses. The ministry called on the need to cover one's nose and mouth with a paper towel when sneezing or coughing and avoiding crowded public spaces when possible. The ministry called on citizens and residents to take on activities that would strengthen their immune system like exercising and drinking plenty of water while ensuring that all scheduled vaccinations are taken as per the ministry's recommendations. Regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Why? Washing your hands with soap and water or using alcohol-based hand rub kills viruses that may be on your hands. Maintain at least one meter distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing and avoid crowded areas as much as possible. Why? 
When someone coughs or sneezes, they spray small liquid droplets from their nose or mouth, which may contain viruses. If you are too close, you can breathe in the droplets, including the COVID-19 virus, if the person coughing has the disease. Crowds are unpredictable zones. Avoid them for now. Why? Hands touch many surfaces and can pick up viruses. Once contaminated, hands can transfer the virus to your eyes, nose or mouth. From there, the virus can enter your body and make you sick. This means covering your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of the used tissue immediately. Why? Droplets spread viruses. By following good respiratory hygiene, you protect the people around you from viruses such as colds, flus, and COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. Stay home if you feel unwell. If you have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention by calling 444 and follow the instructions given by the medical team. Why? The Ministry of Health has the most up-to-date information on the situation, which will protect you and help prevent the spread of viruses and other infections. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, issued a royal order to allow the opening of the Mataf, the area of circumambulation around Islam's holiest site, the Kaaba, for non umrah worshippers starting from the dawn today. State news agency SPA cited the general president of the Grand Mosque and Prophet's Mosque Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, as stressing the need to adhere to the precautionary procedures and to cooperate with all the workers in the Grand Mosque to serve its visitors. The Grand Mosque in Mecca and the Prophet's Mosque in Medina were closed after. Thursday's night prayer for cleaning and sterilization. Saudi Arabia had announced on Wednesday temporarily banning entry of its nationals and residents to Mecca to perform Umrah pilgrimage or visit the Prophet's mosque in Medina to prevent the spread of coronavirus. That came a week after the kingdom suspended entry of international travelers aiming to perform Umrah pilgrimage in Mecca or to visit the Prophet's mosque in Medina, in addition to tourists traveling from countries where the coronavirus poses a risk as determined by the kingdom's health authorities. Finance ministers and central bank governors of G20 expressed deep concern by the human tragedy caused by the spread of COVID-19 and fully supported countries' ongoing measures to contain the outbreak, treat those affected and prevent further transmission. The ministers who met in Riyadh last month, they said that they are closely monitoring the evolution of COVID-19, including its impact on markets and economic conditions. They welcomed the measures and plans put forward by countries to support economic activity and that they are working closely with the IMF, the World Bank and the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD and the Financial Stability Board, the FSB. They also strongly supported coordination with the World Health Organization, in particular with a view to sharing information, assessing needs and devising policy options that countries can implement in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. A cruise ship on Egypt's Nile River with over 150 tourists and local crew was in quarantine today in the southern city of Luxor after 12 people tested positive for the new coronavirus. A Taiwanese-American tourist who had previously been on the same ship tested positive when she returned to Taiwan. The World Health Organization informed Egyptian authorities who tested everyone currently on the ship. Health authorities in Egypt released a statement on Friday saying they'd found a dozen Egyptian crew members on the ship had contracted the fast-spreading virus but did not show any symptoms. The statement said that 12 will be transferred to Isaac isolation in a hospital on Egypt's north coast. The passengers, who include Americans, French and other nationalities, and crew will remain quarantined on the ship awaiting further test results. The Prime Minister of the legitimate Yemeni government, Mu'in Abdel Malik, discussed with the Special Envoy of the Secretary General of the United Nations to Yemen, Martin Griffiths, international moves aimed at calming and reducing escalation and the prospects for the political process. During the meeting, the two parties discussed the continued escalation of the Houthi militia, its violation of the rights of citizens and its effects on a political solution, including the recent military escalation on a number of fronts and war crimes committed against civilians, especially in Al Jouf. The meeting also dealt with the Houthi militia's continued continued refusal to implement the Stockholm Agreement despite the lapse of more than a year since its signing and its repeated violations of the international truce. Earlier, the internationally recognized government of Yemen has vowed to launch a military offensive to recapture strategic areas in northern Yemen taken by the Houthis over the past couple of weeks. Prime Minister Ma'an Abdel Malik said that the war with the Iran-backed militia is in a critical phase since the Houthis made rapid military advances in the northern province of Jauf and the mountainous Nam district near Sana'a. 
He stressed that the army is preparing a major offensive aimed at expelling the coup militias from these areas. The latest circle of fighting erupted in January when a Houthi missile and drone attack killed more than 110 soldiers at a training camp mosque in Merib. Tunisian Chair Ministry said two militants were killed carrying out the attack and five police officers were injured while a civilian suffered minor injuries. The Interior Ministry said in a statement that two individuals targeted a security patrol in the streets leading to the American embassy. Sirens could be heard on the major highway linking the Lac district where the embassy is located with Tunis and suburbs in the north. The U.S. Embassy in a tweet urged people to avoid the area. Sudanese First Vice President Lieutenant General Mohamed Hamdan Deklos stressed that peace negotiations in the capital of the state of South Sudan are proceeding in an optimal way and that all obstacles that were facing the comprehensive peace process began to disappear. Juba negotiations focus on five tracks, the most prominent of which are the Darfur region, the southern Kordofan and the Blue Nile states and the eastern Sudan. Twenty-eight thousand school students entered NASA's competition to name the Mars 2020. The results are due to be announced on March the 5th during a live event that will be streamed across NASA's media channels and social media. Late last year, members of the media were given rare access to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where the Mars 2020 rover is undergoing finishing touches. Mars 2020 team members showed off their progress on the rover ahead of its planned launch this summer. Flight System Manager Ray Baker told the Associated Press in December, from here on out, it's test, test, test. We're testing everything we possibly can, shaking out the bugs to make sure that we've got a reliable system to send to Mars. NASA engineers designed this rover to gather rock and soil samples with the hopes that they will someday be sent back to Earth. The rover is scheduled to land on Mars on February the 18th of 2020.